James Arthur Herbert was born on July 20, 1924 in Fairmont, West Virginia. He is currently married to Alice Herbert and they have three children, all girls. Mr. Herbert served in the United States Army for 33 years and currently resides in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. He fought in World War II, the Vietnam War, and the Korean War. How would you describe your life growing up? Oh, it was interesting. And uh, it was demanding. I had to work. We, a, anyone who was able to work and over the age of about nine or ten had to get a job because of the depression, which was far worse than what we've described as a recession now. Um, but the, for example, our unemployment rate now uh, is around around eight uh, percent. During the Great Depression of the 30s, the average for the whole country was well over 25 uh, percent, three times as uh, as many out of work. I mean, uh, proportion-wise. So uh, we had understanding in our family that if you if you're old enough, you had to go hunt for a job. And generally, the, my four sisters uh, ended up uh, doing domestic work or uh, advertising and they were, they were available for babysitting and things like that. And uh, my uh, one brother was too young to be involved in it. Another one was involved in marketing vegetables. I got three paper routes and uh, went around mowing lawns and that sort of thing to make money. But everyone was busy that I, I mean, that was old enough to, to do anything. So that's quite a big difference between a depression and a recession. Okay, what school did you go to and what kind of student were you? What's that? school did you go to and what kind of student were you? <coughs> well, I went to uh, J.N. Elementary School, which was in walking distance. Wow. Uh, and uh, I would describe it as a, Damn probably it. a traditional elementary school. Uh, it was a no-nonsense uh, school. You. You had to study, you were expected to learn, and uh, if you did well, you would graduate and go to a junior high school in the city. We were in the suburbs and uh, went to a junior high school there for just a year then to, high, to uh, Fairmont High School. And uh, I understood that they were rather demanding um, and uh, were rated pretty high in the, in, within the uh, state. So we were pretty proud of our schools, particularly in the athletic business, playing football and baseball and all that. I was in the band playing the trombone. He was commissioned into the United States Army two days before he turned 18, and he attended the U.S. Military Academy at West Point from July 18, 1942 to June 5, 1945. He was trained to be a leader of combat soldiers at West Point. After graduation, he headed to Fort Benning, Georgia, where he finished off as an infantry officer. Immediately uh, went off to the Philippines, in preparation for the invasion of Japan, which never took place because uh, of the, what we called then an atom bomb or a nuclear bomb uh, on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And then Japan surrendered. Yeah. So that's how, that was, we were expected to be, be taking the place of, of lieutenant platoon leaders as they were shot up in the invasion 
as it turned out, they were sent home and we took their place, but uh, they, uh, they didn't have to get shot up to come home. And there was no, no large invasion. Mr. Herbert also didn't receive any R&R, &R, which stands for Rest and Recuperation. This was because he was not in Korea long enough to earn it. He was shot and badly wounded within a couple months of being there. Can you explain the injury you had in Korea? Well, I, I guess so, because first of all, I, I would say it almost uh, turned Alice into a young widow because it was a serious one. The first one was a, a uh, bullet round, uh, a rifle round right through the neck in one side, out the other, and it, fortunately it missed uh, the vital uh, arteries, veins, Wind. bronchial. Somehow it, it, I, I was still able to talk a little bit, and I, but I, there was a lot of internal bleeding. And a second round went through here and shattered the clavicle and tore up uh, the right shoulder. And a third one blew out the deltoid muscle, which is what you use to lift your arm with. <laughs> and another round through the arm. All of this happened very quickly. And I was eventually... Uh, had, if you can understand that this, during that, that particular firefight, uh, we ended up with uh, a number killed and, a, and about 30 wounded. So that left about 40 able-bodied rangers and they had to carry out the dead and assist the wounded because the we had some Korean stretcher bearers but they all took off and we didn't get to use them. So the, the entire company was was uh, involved in escaping from a continuing firefight and to get to a tank platoon that was waiting for us. And fortunately, the, we were able to make it. I know with all the wounds that I had, I had to walk. Others were walking, holding their intestines in. Herbert was in the hospital from April 1951 until November that same year. He spent seven months recovering from his injuries that almost got him killed. He went back to the States to go to Walter Reed Hospital to get fixed up. When he was released, he went right back to business by going back to Fort Benning. Mr. Herbert worked directly with the province chief in Quang Nam province. The chief had gotten a master's degree at Michigan State University. Later on, uh, in dealing with the, uh, with, with the Vietnamese leaders, I had uh, studied the Vietnamese language uh, best I could. And uh, so I got along pretty nicely with them, partly in English and partly in Vietnamese. When coming back from Japan, he said the soldiers were treated normally. Coming back from Vietnam was a different story, though. Mr. Herbert said the soldiers were, in a sense, spat upon and were very discredited for their service. A common name they were for referred to as was baby killers. Mr. Herbert was involved in the 506th Airborne Battle Group. During the time he was there, it was located at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. The 506th was part of the 101st Airborne Division. It had no battle activity at the time Mr. Herbert was there. His group was in training mode at all the time, but it was never in active combat. In 1970, Herbert was placed in the battalion headquarters in Alaska. He explained that the headquarters had a battalion commander and small staff. Then above that, there was a regimental headquarters that had a regimental commander and his staff. Above the regimental headquarters, there was a U.S. Army, Alaska. Herbert listed some of the medals he received during his time of service. He explained that he got some medals just for assignment. 
Mr. Herbert said that you got a World War II victory medal if you were in the service when that happened. He got an Asiatic Pacific medal because he was in the Philippines. Since he went to airborne school, Mr. Herbert got parachute wings. Two others of his medals included the Bronze Star and the Legion of Merit. For his service in Japan, he got the Occupation of Japan medal and a Purple Heart for his wounds. He obtained two presentations of the Distinguished Service Medal, one for Vietnam and one in the Pentagon. Mr. Herbert said that medals come at all times, and if you perform well, you are generally rewarded. In Mr. Herbert's 29th year of service, he became a Brigadier General. After Mr. Herbert retired from active duty, he spent six years raising money for the USO. The USO was a service to the military forces. Mr. Herbert, we would like to thank you for your time and heroic acts in your 33 years of service. We would also like to thank you for allowing us to interview you for the Veterans History Project.